Hello my friends, I feel like I haven't done a watching from Hermes update in ages, which is genuinely because there haven't been that many interesting and noteworthy new launches. So instead of talking about all the upcoming launches, which I never know when and if they'll hit stores, I figured we could have a look on the Hermes website. Now I do have a suspicion that there isn't going to be much for us to see, so we are also going to have a browse on some of my favorite pre-love sites. I'm hoping that we're going to find some great deals on Birkins, Kelly's, Constances, some other interesting Hermes pieces, fingers crossed. So if you'd like to come window shopping with me for Hermes online, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. So let's start on the Hermes website and see what they have to offer, which believe it or not, there was a point in time when you could actually find great things on the website. I mean, I'm not a regular on the Hermes website these days, but it's been a while since I last saw something that was interesting or even noteworthy but let's just look and see what bags they have available okay wow well, i guess they do have more than i expected because they have some lindy's you guys know my thoughts on lindy's they are some of my least favorite bags in general and definitely when it comes to rms bags but if you are interested they do pop up on the website sometimes so they do have some lindy 26 bags here which are considered a smaller Lindy bag, not the smallest, but they are quite small. We have a Ruli Mini, which is a bag that I do have an in-depth review on. I do own the Ruli, but I have it in the bigger size. And I have to be honest, it's not my favorite bag. There's just something off about it. It's quite wide and thick for crossbody bags. So I think it looks best when it's carried as a shoulder bag, which just personally doesn't suit me. I find the flap quite annoying to use, so it's just not my favorite bag. A lot of people compare it to the Constance and say that it's a more sort of subtle and under the radar take on the Constance bag. To me, the Constance is a lot more user-friendly than the Ruli bag. And then the most interesting bag that we have here on top is the Space Melise bag. Melise, I think it's called. It's a bag that has been around for I mean, decades. It's a bag that RMS has been doing for a really long time. And it started out as, obviously, as you see it here, it is a clutch bag. And from the very beginning, it was one of those bags that RMS loved having fun with. They did some really cool, quirky graphic takes on this bag. And that's how this bag lives on. It continues to be one of these limited edition, really sort of collector's pieces. It's not one of those bags that you'll carry every single day. So this is the space take on the Melise bag, which not only features this really cool graphic detail with the spaceship, but it is also made up of different exotic leathers. And my favorite detail on this bag, which by the way, this bag has been around for years. It is not anything new. The fact that it's still online means that no one wanted to pay $23,000 for it, which I can completely understand. But this bag originally launched I mean, it's been a few years now. And what I love about this bag, my favorite detail is actually the strap, because if you have a close look at the strap, you can see the strap actually features different planets and each planet is made of a different leather. Some of them are made of exotic leathers and then others are kind of a little patchwork mix of regular and exotic skins, which is just my favorite detail. If this strap was available on its own, it's definitely something that I would put on my wish list. Would I ever buy it? probably not for the price because I assume if this strap was available by itself, it would probably be, I mean, seven, $8,000 and I would never pay that kind of money for a single shoulder strap. But I do love the detail. Do I think that this bag is worth $23,000? Definitely not unless you're an Hermes collector and all you really care about is collecting special RMS bags. Now we're back on the bags page and it seems like we have some new bags to look at. So it's just been updated with a Herbag 31, which you guys know how much I love my Herbags. I personally prefer the Herbag 39 for my proportions. And I also love the fact that the Herbag 39 does fit a Mac, whereas the 31 doesn't unless you have a really, really, really tiny MacBook. Well, actually you can put a 13 inch MacBook in your Herbag 31, but you won't be able to close it because you have to put it um, vertically. That's the word. I always confuse vertical and horizontal, but you have to put it vertically and you won't be able to close the bag. Whereas with a Herbag 39, that is not an issue. But anyway, going back to the 31, it's an amazing understated user-friendly bag. If you're looking for an everyday grab and go bag, 
there is no way you can go wrong with the Herbag 31 or 39, depending on which one you opt for. And this is in the special leg finish, which just basically means that the Clos de Sac clasp, it has an enamel finish that is matched to the color of the bag. Okay, I'm actually glad that we're looking at the site now because it is bulking up nicely. So since we started looking at it, they have added two more colors of the Mini Ruli. So we have it in Grease Mayer. By the way, these are all in ever color. We have it in Blue de Pru, and then we also have it in Rose Texas. I think Grease Mayer is the newest shade out of the three, which is my favorite color out of all of them. And then I think Grease Mayer is actually matched with Perma Brass Hardware, which just makes it so incredibly special. Again, the Mini Ruli or the Ruli in general is not my favorite style, but if it is yours, it is something that you can find on the website every now and again. And then they have also just added a Picatin too, which I bet as soon as I click on it, yep, it's already gone, but I assume it was in the color gold. It is the smallest Picatin in the core line. There technically is a size smaller Picatin, but it usually comes in some weird finishes. They did the Daisy finish recently, and then in the past it was a limited edition bag, but when it comes to the core line, it is the smallest, but not technically the smallest Picatin that exists. It's a basic bucket bag. If you like a bucket bag, this is something you'll enjoy. And if you don't, you probably won't. And these are all the bags that there are. There are also some of these 35 millimeter wide back straps with the harness detail, which I mean, they're quite expensive for a back strap. These really only work on larger bags. So unless you're going to put them on a Kelly 35 plus or a larger bolide, these are going to overwhelm the bag that you put these on, which is probably why they have it in every single hardware finish available online still. And then moving on, let's look at SLGs really quick and see what's new. So we do have some Oran Nano back charm still, which I'm not surprised by. The Pilo phone cases I talked about in a recent video of mine, long story short, I don't really like them. If you want to hear my thoughts on these, I'll make sure to have a video linked up here for you. We have some um, of the carry pocket pouches, which do feature the same prints as Hermes scarves. Not my favorite. I'm really not seeing anything interesting here. Oh, this is surprising. So they still have the Ash Beauté, H Beauty powder bag, which I think they launched for the release of their powder blushes because the idea was that, as you can see it here, it's a hard shell trunk that perfectly fits a little travel makeup brush and then your Hermes blush. And I think there might be a car slot or two in there, which, you know, it is for the true Hermes collector. And it's kind of a weird thing to buy anyway, because I mean, who carries just a single blush around? I mean, at this point you could put your powder in there, your mattifying powder from Hermes, but it's not something that I was blown away by. I get the idea, but you know, it's just not something I would go crazy for. Okay, there are some interesting things here. So we have three different takes on the Ruli Slim. So let's click on it and see what color they're in. So we have it in Nata in goat skin. We have it in black with Permabrass hardware, which is similar to rose gold. It's not technically rose gold, but it is most similar to rose gold. And then we also have it in black goat skin with palladium hardware. I don't personally own the Ruli Slim, but I have the Constant Slim, which is a piece that I did several reviews on. So I will make sure to have all of those linked in the info box for you in case you want to learn more about these pieces. They're fine. They're a little bit expensive for what they are in my opinion, but if you're an SLG collector, you're going to love these. There is a Click 16, which does come with a shoulder strap, which is nice. I personally wouldn't carry this as a little bag. To me, it's just too small to be worn as a bag, but if you're interested, it's available now online. And then two new things, one of which is the Pochan Plus wallet, which is a weird one. I'm not really sure what to think about it. I cannot really wrap my head around the design because it's this really, really thin, almost envelope-like shape that features an extremely short strap. I don't really know what you'd be able to do with the strap because, I mean, it would barely go over my arm, so I couldn't even carry it as a shoulder bag. But if you are looking for an envelope that does feature a strap, I mean, this is around. I quite like the clasp that it comes with because it features a Shandong kind of a modernized version of the Shandong clasp. And then the other piece, which is quite interesting, is the Nouveau to go, which is 
most similar to the silk in wallet it's kind of a similar shape but it does feature a shoulder strap as well as a tiny little sort of pocket on the outside and i'm trying to think what else we should look at shall we look at shoes maybe let's have a quick browse so there are some heels there are a million and one different takes on the kelly twist closure inspired shoes so you have the empire sandals which are probably my least favorite you have some with higher heels like the glamour sandals i think there is one that's even higher in terms of height there are the cute sandals which i actually quite like not for myself because i don't wear heels but if you do the cute sandals i think are probably the most graceful out of the bunch and i thought that there was a higher heel version of these kelly inspired shoes i thought there was one higher than the glamour if i can think of what they're called i'll try to leave them up on the screen here but i'm pretty sure that there is a version that features a higher heel we have some orans and interesting finishes we have the o oasis which is a similar idea to the oran except the heel it features a heel whereas the orans are completely flat we have some sheep in some new colorways you know just the basics there's really nothing that exciting here in my opinion at least these are also new for spring summer which are the get sneakers they do them both for men and women and they feature the rms logo printed on the outside and then oh they also have the orans but this is not the mink version so at one point they did the orans in mink but these i think okay so these are in shearling they're kind of similar to the mink version if i was to buy an oran at this point which i don't wear oran and i couldn't because they're too narrow for me but if i was to buy an oran i would probably buy it in an interesting finish so i would either get it in ostrich or i would try to get it in mink or in the shearling finish because i do think it makes it just a little bit more special but don't get it in that curly shearling that a lot of people get get it in this version which just makes you look like the cookie monster but in kind of a cool way before jumping over to the pre-love sides i wanted to have the previous look at fine jewelry because there are two or three collections that i don't think we've discussed before one of which is the shandong chaos collection which features rings bracelets i think there might be a couple of different necklaces too but my favorite piece in this collection is the earring which features a cuff and then also this little stud i wouldn't wear an earring but if you do definitely give this a try i think it's such a cool look it basically features different takes on the shantong as well as different chains and tiny little diamonds one thing that you should keep in mind which i heard from friends who have tried this is that the cuff part is quite big so give it a try but if you have smaller ears this probably won't work for you and then the other piece that i want to show you which is going to be much larger of an investment but it is a new collection and it's the so-called a dash collection it's basically a blown up oversized take on the iconic shandong and this is one of my favorite pieces in this entire collection which is this double ring and then one of the shandong pieces is in pave diamond so if you are looking for a truly show-stopping piece which you guys know that i do love hermes fine jewelry there are some true hidden gems and this will definitely be a head-turning piece so if you are considering buying any luxury pieces pre-loved especially hermes i do have an entire playlist full of tips and tricks discussing where to and where not to buy pre-loved sharing how to approach this idea of authenticity what to look out for what things to avoid what is a telltale sign of a piece being fake or authentic definitely check out some of the videos that i did on the topic i will make sure to have my playlist link down below for you and i think we're going to have a browse on fashion file which i do love fashion file it's a site that i discussed in depth in one of my videos before the reason we're going to have a look here is because they probably have the largest selection of hermes pieces they have everything from bags through accessories all the way to shoes one thing that i don't love about fashion file is that they seem to be more about quantity over quality not quite as bad as something like a vestier or the real real but it doesn't feel like the most luxurious shopping experience so what i'm going to try to do for you is every single piece that we discuss that i recommend i will have listed and linked in the info box so you don't have to go through the 
thousand pieces that they have available online. So if you're interested in anything, definitely check out my info box because it will be, I'll try my best to link it down below and not forget about them. But let's jump straight in. So we are going to, I should start screen record. And here we go. So we're going to look at new arrivals, which they always have new arrivals. And I am going to select, let's talk about our mess today, but if you guys enjoyed this type of a video, we can definitely do more of them and we can also shop for really any other brand. If you enjoyed this video and make sure to give it a thumbs up just so I know that it's something that I should make more of. And as you guys can see, Fashion Fab really carries most of our favorite luxury brands. They even have Foundry, which I didn't even realize. But let me find Hermes and let's look at what they have available that's new. So they have, oh my God, I used to love these bracelets. These are called the Anno bracelet. And you might look at them and think, what's the point of having a bracelet that's hollow? So I don't know how many people know about this, but these bracelets that RMS had, I'm not sure if they're still available, but they were quite popular in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. The idea is that you would buy these with a Twilly and you would actually wear this on your wrist with a twilly underneath it so it wouldn't just show your skin underneath it but you would actually have a twilly wrapped underneath it so it would basically combine two of Hermes' specialties their incredible silk prints and their exquisite leathers so that's the idea if you ever see one of these Hermes bracelets that feature a lot of holes or a lot of cutouts usually it is because they are meant to be worn with a silk piece underneath them so Maybe that's a great way to spice up your Twilly collection if that's something that you are looking to do. We do have a Box Kelly 28 at a pretty decent price. I mean, it's in blue marine, not in black. It is definitely an old Kelly because it doesn't have the hooks for the shoulder strap. So for 9,000, that's not a bad price and it seems to be in pretty decent condition. I also did a video sharing which bags I would recommend that you buy pre-loved and which ones I would not. So. If that's something that you would like to hear my tips on, I'm not an expert by any means, but I can share with you my experience. I will have all of those in the playlist. We do have a Bergen 30 in chocolate, which I have to be honest, chocolate is not my favorite color. There are so many of these colors that are similar to black, but they are not quite black. My favorite is graphite. So graphite is a great color, which is somewhere between gray and black. So it's a true charcoal color. There is chocolate, which is a dark brownish black. And then there's Prunoir. Prunoir I also enjoy, which is black with the slightest hint of purple. But chocolate, I'm not a big brown person when it comes to brown. I really want my bags to be in gold or in some shade of Berenia Faborg. We have a Birkin 25 here in the color Chai. I love, love Chai. I'm curious Oh, it's in Togo. I thought it was in Evercolor or Swift for a second just because it looked kind of smooth in the picture, but it is definitely in Togo and it is a beautiful bag. Now, 30,000, that is pretty expensive for a Birkin 25, but considering the color and how tough these bags are to get, I kind of understand the upcharge. Is it ridiculously expensive? Yes, it is. But if it's a bag that you would like to add to your wish list, you don't want to wait for and you don't want to have to build a relationship for. I mean, you could do, do worse, I guess. You see, that's what I love about Fashion File. They have some of the most random but funnest things. So this is a saddle box that I've seen at Hermes before. It's actually something that I think I have on my Hermes wish list with my advisor. So she said that she would let me know if this ever becomes available, which is this metal box that was designed to hold your saddles and all your horse sort of equestrian grooming essentials, which they do have several of these different boxes. There are different shapes, there are different sizes, but this is one of my favorites because it is round and then it does come with a removable insert. It is really cool, but I'm pretty sure it is the same price as it is in the boutique. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but I think it is in a similar price range. So it's definitely not something that I would buy from Fashion File. If you got a good saving, yeah, it's definitely something that I would consider. But if it's the same price as it is in the boutique, just wait to get it directly from your advisor. Moving on, we do have one of my favorite bags, which is the grooming bag. It's a great bag. We have the mosaic bag, which I don't particularly love. We have a picketing in Chai with Palladium hardware. I definitely prefer Chai with gold hardware. We do have 
one of the limited edition picket tins. So Hermes does play around with the picket tins and they will usually make the handle out of an interesting material, a unique leather. So they did this version where the handle featured this hand woven detail. It's my least favorite special take on the picket tins. I just don't really enjoy or even like the look of these woven details and the color combination definitely leaves me wanting more. This is an interesting bag. So we have a shoulder Birkin here, which launched during Jean-Paul Gaultier's creative direction. And it's at a pretty decent price. I mean, it's not in the best condition, but it is pretty reasonable. So if you love to carry your bags over your shoulder, if you're really into this sort of 90s, early 2000s aesthetic, it is a pretty decent bag and for 5200 you could do a lot worse with your money. Personally, it's not something that I would buy because I'm not a shoulder back kind of guy. But as you can see here in the styling picture, the handles are a lot longer than they would be in an actual Birkin. And then the bag is also more elongated and shorter, which I think is the reason I don't love it. I just don't like a horizontally elongated bag. I would much prefer this bag if they just kept the shape as is. We have a Kelly Sally 28 in a tube in Tadelac leather, which I mean, it is quite special. So it says that it's in excellent condition. And I would trust Fashion File's rating. Fashion File is the company that I sold some of my pieces through when I was going through my collection and I was getting rid of things a few years ago. And I'm really familiar with how thorough their authentication process is. So they are definitely someone that I would trust. Would I trust them blindly? No, I would not. But I would have a lot more confidence in them than I do in some other companies out there. And for 17500 I mean, you're definitely paying a little bit of a premium, but it's not bad by any means. So if you love the Delac leather and you're looking for Kelly 28, it's something that you could possibly consider. There is, so here is a special order bag, a tricolor special order bag, which features Nata, Tri, and then Grace Mayer. So the body of the bag is Nata. It's an Epsom, I assume. Yeah, it does say Epsom. I should really learn how to read. So. It's made of Epsom, the body of the bag is Nata, the sangles are made of chai, and then the shoulder strap, the handle, and then the little clochette are made of Grease Mayer, which I'm not one of those people who likes multicolored bags. I mean, I'm one of those people who doesn't like colored bags full stop, but if you are, this is a pretty nice combination. I personally would have probably done the handles and the strap also, in chai or maybe in a shade of blue that could have been really nice but if you like a tricolor bag this is a pretty decent color combination to go for it's in size 25 which is an incredibly desirable size and it is a special order bag so even though it is not brand new it is quite expensive so you're definitely paying a lot of premium for this. Wow, this bag has really taken my breath away, which I never thought I would ever say about a Calicut. You guys know that I'm not a fan of the Calicut bags, but this is, I mean, this is genuinely breathtaking. So they do have a doubly, which means suede. It's Hermes's take on suede. Calicut in the color ochre, which this has to be brand new. Yeah, it's in giftable condition. It has to be a new bag just because suede is so incredibly delicate. You use it once and you will be able to tell, but seems to, but this seems to be in pristine condition. It's giftable, which I assume means that it's never been used and it is, I mean, just gorgeous. I do wish that it was in a Kelly pochette, but if you love a Kelly cut, this is divine. Is it ridiculously expensive for 29,000? Well, technically 28,790, but with tax, it's gonna end up being over 30,000. Is it ridiculously overpriced? Yes, probably three times the price of the original retail price, but it is insanely special. And the fact that it is from 2022 and it's in brand new condition doesn't mean that it's, it's, you know, you're getting a really limited bag. Personally, if I was to price this bag, I mean, it's not my business, but if I was to sell this bag, I would probably sell it for maybe half the price and they would still make a hefty profit. But I understand that this is how resellers make their money. It is definitely ridiculously expensive, but it is also a ridiculously beautiful bag. And then let me see if there's anything else that's interesting. There is a Birkin 25. I'm not a fan of Lise 
and especially not leave saying Nilo Croc. I have a video discussing the different types of exotic that RMS uses, sharing the pros and cons of each one, including the different types of crocodile and alligator because they're not all the same. So I'll make sure to have it linked down below for you. We have a So Cali 26, which similar to the shoulder Birkins is a discontinued style. But if you love a hobo bag or this is kind of a hobo bag meets a bucket bag, definitely pick this up. It is a gorgeous bag. And for $4,000, I'll link it down below for you. If it's not sold, definitely give it a look because it is a really, really great deal. And it is a nice bag as long as this is a style that you would be able to take advantage of. And it's not something that you could buy directly from Hermes at this point. And then one of the last pieces on this page is another SoCali 26, but this is in two tones. So this is in purple and blue, but to me, the red one seems to be in better shape. What do they say? They say the condition is very good for that one. And I think they say the same about this one too. I would personally go for the red one unless you don't like red, but um, yeah, for this kind of money, you cannot go wrong with either one of these bags. Of course, as long as this is a style that you appreciate, but this actually brings us to the end of today's video. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, and if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And while you're down there, make sure to share your thoughts on the pieces we discussed, which one was your favorite, which one was your least favorite? Do you agree with my reviews? Is there anything that you would like to add? The comment section is as always open for you. So I just really appreciate you being here and watching and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.